night. That's the the lunar eclipse, the full moon. That is five days before uh, Leo season starts. So the Ace of Swords. The whole like what we have intended to release and what we've kind of worked through, I think we're going to be asked to actually cut off. And through that action of severing between what we were experiencing previously and what we are going to bring into our awareness now, like we are saying a lot of stuff with this. We're saying I am willing to say no to the shit that no longer aligns with me. I'm willing to say no to things that feel bad. I'm willing to say no when I feel no within me. I'm willing to cut through the shit that's not for me even when it looks so fucking sexy. I'm willing to just appreciate all the things in life that don't want me back, that don't show up for me in that equal exchange of energy, that don't, like, we're not, like, the, the circling around each other isn't totally positive or what I want to feel in this experience. You know, we have limited time. Time is our most valuable resource. And when we control what we're paying attention to, this is the huge thing. What we pay our attention to, this controls our experience. We are buying our experience of life because you are buying an emotional vibe by what you pay attention to. Because what you pay attention to has specific vibrations to it, right? And if we pay attention to the things that consistently make us feel bad when they're in our aura, relationships that keep us confused, that, that promise us one thing and then it's immediately like the other direction, you know, when we are finally really willing to say no to those experiences, we are claiming back the currency of attention as well as the currency of possibility. Because if you are focusing your attention on something that definitely does not work for you, not only are you wasting your time, wasting your present moments, which is the only thing you have, you're wasting what could be. Because with every, everything that you pay attention to has a return. But if those returns are not equal then you are limiting what you can experience. You are paying top dollar for scraps. When a ace shows up, we're talking about all of the potential in this realm. What are the swords? The swords are the, 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 the initiator. They start everything off. And you know, it's very interesting to me that we pull this for that kind of culmination of energy for cancer season. Finishing it off with a Capricorn full moon. If we learn to trust our feelings instead of asking our feelings to tell us what's what you know this is it's instead of like experiencing emotion being like what does this mean trust your like emotions to actually be telling you something <clears throat> not what does it mean that i'm feeling this what is this feeling telling me about my experience? Because it will tell you stuff about what you believe. It'll tell you stuff about what you think is true. It'll tell you about whether you your boundaries are being crossed. Because even if we haven't interfaced with them, when they are crossed, we have a specific emotional reaction to that. The Ace of Swords is basically... All of the potential of what we could create by paying our attention to that which we desire. 
So where are those places where you can invest and what you're getting back at least is as equal in measure and feel good? Because, you know, when we are feeling good, we are where we should be. You know, everybody wants direction. Everybody wants clarity. Everybody wants purpose. When we feel good in the present moment, what else could there be right now for us? Because where we are is in the present. If we're doing the thing, if we're with the people, if we're paying attention to the things, participating in the activities that make us feel good, then we are, we are aligned. We are where we should be. And even if we're experiencing struggle and pain and like we're not liking where we are right now, guess what? That's also where we should be because it's what's here. My new favorite philosophy, Amor Fati. Love your fate. Love what is. Love what has shown up for you because it is your teacher. If nothing else is your fucking teacher. And it's another experience to put in your pocket. This experience depthens your empathy, your compassion, your understanding for the human experience, your breadth and width. You become a, a better resource for life lived. When the swords, you know, show up for us, we really are being invited to, to identify what our truth is. Right now, where am I? Right now, what works? Right now, what doesn't? Right now, how could I flip this narrative to change my perspective? That's where I think our power lies. All in the mind. But we got to use it as the tool that it is. And we can't just let it run amok. We can't just trust like that everything that comes up that's in front of us is where the focus needs to be. Because sometimes distractions come up, right? And that's sometimes why people will come into our circle and it feels like there's something tra attracting them into this and it's like unresolved shit in our, in our, both of our experiences that is like, the universe is like, okay, you guys are at the same level. Let's like get y'all interacting. Y'all are in the same vicinity. Let's pull y'all in together. And see if y'all can't work some shit out. What you choose to do from there is on you. You guys were meant to come into contact so you have a chemical reaction. You are meant to be in the situations you've signed up for, in the relationships you've signed up for, in the family that you were born to, in the country that you found yourself in. All of these things were meant to teach you something. They're meant to be something. But if we do not align with our truth, we don't know what to do with that information. If we are not willing to like take up the sword, which is the responsibility of our own minds, recognizing what it is as a creative tool, what it is as a reflection of influence, meaning like what has been put into it, that's what we're getting. That has started the ripple effect of what we're seeing out in our lives. What we believe is literally like shaping how we feel it is shaping how we act it is shaping what we get in life what shows up for us it all starts here and this is such a vital thing with cancer season it's like <clears throat> the powers of our imagination are heightened here you get to choose whether you use them to create a more abundant universe for yourself or to create a more limited universe for yourself it's up to you to frame your world as you want to see it that's 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 the responsibility that's the creative role to create a world you feel at home in that's the the healing journey of cancer is to create that like sense of like you know life itself is nurturing me i don't have to think of you know, some human who played the role of my mother as responsible for making sure that I figured out what I need. Because God know, Goddess only knows she didn't figure out what she needed. This is why the mother wound is perpetuated so deeply. It's like so many of us, like, just project 
the responsibility onto our mothers for that wound. When we would recognize that the wound heals itself when we decide to show up and nurture ourselves. Meaning when we decide to mentally framework like all I can do right now is figure out how I would best feel nurtured in this moment and to do it for myself, God damn it. And that's, that, it takes a little bit of daddy. It takes that Capricorn energy. It takes the, what we care about, we have to work for. We have to show up for ourselves. We have to be the, the knight in shining armor of our own lives. We have to take up the sword. We have to answer the call to adventure. The adventure of figuring this out, creating a roadmap up here. And when our, our psyche is like open and the veil is thin, like in this moon ruled cancer season and our imagination's on high, you know, creative juices are flowing all over the place, you guys. And like, you know, the subconscious is just like accessible. You imagining what you want aligned with what you desire. Your body can't tell the difference between that and actual experience. So you can use this season. You can use that Capricorn full moon and lunar eclipse. It's going to be a partial lunar eclipse. I don't think we'll be able to see it in the United States. People in, in Europe, like Asia and Africa, I think should be able to see it, but not us which is kind of cool. Like there's these background things working and we need to understand that what it is, is, is bringing is this, this strong silent type of masculine, divine masculine energy. Who's like, I know what's right for us. And I'm going to work for it. It's my responsibility. Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. The ultimate daddy energy. He respects time. He puts in work. He's an authority of himself. He rules himself. He is a master of himself. Self-discipline. Choosing our thoughts requires self-discipline. But if we care about living a life where we are nurtured, where we are getting what we need, what we desire, what will fill our cups up, because we know that when we are filled, we will overflow to the rest of the world, meaning you deserve the best kinds of relationships. You deserve the most fulfilling opportunities. You deserve the most healed you could be in this present moment, meaning that divine daddy energy within you absolutely should cut through anyone's bullshit should cut through should figure out should weigh out and figure out who's worthy of the types of relationships it's not about we're, de we're declaring or judging whether they're worthy of love or whatever no it's whether they're worthy to be in our lives because we know what we're serving we know what we're aimed at. And we know that if we are going to get our job done here, that the people that we have in our lives have to support that. So it must be us before them. And it must be them, like, serving themselves while they can be in relationship to us. Meaning we both have a similar upward direction and we can rotate around each other and we can both give to one another. This isn't about just me, 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 me. Let me get what I want. Let me get what I care about. No, it's I care about the fucking world, actually. It's why I have to give a damn about myself. It's why I have to be the daddy, the authoritarian, and the mommy who nurtures and picks me up when it's hard. When I have to say no to people I love. Who I genuinely value and appreciate and desperately wish. In every part of me. That it could be different. And that I want to cry about. You know, I'm going to be the divine mommy who holds space for that. And holds me. And I'm also going to be the daddy 
that stands at the fucking gateway to my soul, to my heart, and says, you shall not pass, bitch. Nothing personally against you. I mean, she loved you. But this is not right for her. This is not right for them. Not this friend, not this opportunity, not that avenue, not that job, not that location. Don't move there. Whenever we get the no's, like, why can't we trust that that's, you know, the universal daddy, like, he's like, he can't be personal anymore because we don't listen to him. So it gets big and it's just like, no, I'm going to just block it. And people are going to say no to you and all that kind of shit. When we're really doing it, we do it on that personal level. And people could be saying yes, yes, yes to us, giving us everything that we think that we want. And it'll only be through that internal, we've practiced trust enough. We're listening to ourselves enough. We feel the resistance, just the tiniest bit of resistance enough when we're involved in these things that we know, huh, not right for me. I got to say no here, even though everything else looks so good. Being able to say no to the sexy, this is... This is the wisdom that we're being called into for this big eclipse season because we have to continuously show up and put the action towards what we genuinely care about, which is having fulfilled relationships, having equal balanced relationships, being led by our heart, being able to speak our, our heart's desire and that be safely held, um, being able to care for ourselves and being able to take our time and be in process and hold that space for others as well. 